Welcome to Friday's session. Uh, we have some snatches on the docket, and we also have, we're gonna go dive into cleans a little bit more today. And then we'll do jerks uh, the next video you guys see. So, we got to snatch 122 because within two days we've gained 2,000 followers. That's a fucking huge mosquito. Do you see the size of that thing? It's like fucking. So, we got to do 122 today. With these snatches, I kind of want to go heavier to be more entertaining, but at the same time, like, I might be snatching every day for, like, a month. So I need to do the bare minimum and just knock out my single and move on. I'm going to get some stimulus if I'm doing this every day, so I don't need to overdo it. But we're going to do that first, and then we'll spend more time in this video on the cleans talking about some technical stuff. I'm just going to run through some cues like we did on the snatch in the last video. It'll be nice and descriptive and all that stuff. So you're gonna watch me snatch right now. Day five of snatching one kilo for every 1,000 followers I have. Last night, we jumped up 2,000 followers. So I have to do 122 today. It's fifth day in a row. Let me, let me film it. That's all we gotta do. We're gonna get into the clean and jerk a little bit here, folks. Um, but I know for a fact my rack position is gonna be tight as shit, so I'm gonna show you how I go about alleviating that. Because the way I go about it is a little different than the way most people go about it. So, if you pick up the bar, and you turn your elbows over, and you're like, oh my god, this is the fucking worst. Before you start, like, stretching your lats and doing all this stuff, the root cause is probably your thoracic spine, and you're probably like me, and you probably sit in front of a phone or a computer too much. So your thoracic spine is really fucked up, and the easiest way to open that up, get the bar in the front, don't even worry about your rack position here, go to a squat, and we're just doing clean grip sots press with a two second pause at the top. Three sets of five. And we'll do a little before and after of what the rack position looks like. All right, so I guarantee you after that set, my rack position is better. And it is. This isn't terrible anymore. So what we're gonna go straight into is the tall clean. This is the same as the tall snatch. But what's important here is that we set our back. We're not just hanging with the shoulders all inactive and the bar just hanging down. We wanna keep the back braced. So lift the shoulders up, pull them back, then push them down. Now you're set and then get your belly breath. And from here, all we're gonna do is keep the knuckles pointing towards the floor and we're gonna pull up and we're gonna make sure the elbows stay above the bar until the bar passes the chest. That's when we rotate through. And just like the tall snatch, we're just jumping under these. So once it passes the belly button, we're under. And notice how the elbows stay up until it passes the chest. What's important on those is that you catch with your elbows really, really high. If you're just doing these and you're keeping your torso down and you're jumping under like this, that's exactly what you're gonna do when you gotta actually clean and you're gonna fuck your shit up. So when you catch these, get those elbows really high. An important thing to make sure you're doing when you are pulling from the floor, when you're doing any clean, is to make sure when we make contact, we're not standing up and then making contact. That's something I see way too often. That will result in you hitting the bar like this and yanking with the arms. And that's gonna overcompensate your pull under, so you're gonna slam yourself into the bottom and the bar's gonna slam on you. And that is how we create terribly painful cleans. What we wanna do instead is we pull from the floor, we push with the legs, knees get out of the way, and we get back with bent legs. We want to make that contact with a deep knee bend, that way we can take the legs and pump them into the bar and actually generate power from the legs rather than just getting here and standing up and then we have to fucking smack the bar. So you wanna be patient, but we always wanna to return to a good amount of knee bend. That way we can use the legs to accelerate the bar. So I wanna talk about my dynamic start in the clean a little bit. And I literally took this from Ilya. 
and just copied him because that's all I would do. But this is the one thing that really stuck around outside of like my timing in between the clean and the jerk. So I would set up with the clean, you want the bar a little more over the middle of the foot. Snatch, you want it over the ball of the foot. But if you look down, should be right over the middle of the foot, if not a little in front of it. Then when we grab the bar, we get set. And what I like to do is take my breath here, set my core, and then I'll send the hips down and forward, just kind of like swoop them down and get the chest up. And what that does, if you do that right, immediately everything is in my quads. Like there's nothing else that's really firing there. It puts everything into my quads. And then from there, I just push and we get the perfect pull off the floor because we're taking all of the tension and just jamming it into our quads. That way, when we push into the floor, that's what's gonna be firing. The chest isn't gonna drop and we're gonna be in perfect position. All right, and the last cue that we're gonna do today, because we're gonna do more of these where I just drop cues on you guys, but I don't wanna do too much in one load because if you have too many cues in your mind, then they start working against each other. They don't stick, they don't work. So we gotta progressively load these onto you. That is not what she said. The last cue is when we get to that power position with a good amount of knee bend, this is where we wanna be every single time. You wanna make sure that your feet are flat. I know, I fucking know that Carlos Nassar does this fucking crazy like on his toes shit. You are not him and you are also not 27 claiming you're 19. The biggest mistake you can make as a weightlifter is just disregarding basics to compare yourself to like the best in weightlifting. Let's focus on the basics. When you get to your power position here, the feet should still be flat. If we're onto the toes too early, look at the bar. Watch what happens when I get onto my toes. The bar moves like three inches forward. So make sure your feet are flat. And then from here with the shoulders right on top of the bar, all we have to do is punch the legs and pull underneath. All right, so I've got, since I've been posting cues on Instagram a little bit more lately and on YouTube, I get the comments of, well, what about uh, T and Tao? What about Carlos Nassar? What about these people? You guys have to understand that you are, just because the best in the world does something doesn't mean you should do it that way too. There are basics that are advantageous for most people and there are outliers. If you take someone that's trying to get into basketball and you force them to shoot like Larry Bird every time, chances are they're not gonna get very good at shooting. Larry Bird, one of the best shooters ever, but he put the ball behind his fucking head and just threw it. That's not ideal for basketball and fucking sending your shoulders two foot or two feet behind the bar is not gonna be advantageous for weightlifting. Yes, Carlos Nassar does it, but it doesn't mean you should do it. There are basics that help people. There are basics that work for everyone and there are small things that work for outliers. Don't assume you're an outlier. That only sets you up for disaster. So do the basics really, really well, adopt them, practice them, and I guarantee you that's gonna take you farther along your weightlifting journey than trying to do some fancy shit that your favorite weightlifter does. All right, so that's all. Um, get the technique manual for today. I hope you guys enjoyed those cues. I hope they were useful. That's five cues. The technique manual has 180 cues. So if you literally want, let me do the math, 36X, the cues you just received, you can get it for $30 and you can keep them forever. And they're very accessible. You can access them during your workouts. You can get to the exact cue you need within 30 seconds of opening the technique manual, which is enough time for you to make quick on the fly changes in your training that could save bad training sessions. So it's the highest value product I've ever put out. It is the most work I've ever put into a product. So very first link, click that, support it, because I genuinely think it's one of the best products out there. And if you're one of the weightlifters that can't afford remote coaching, it's like having a seminar in your back pocket. So download it. Um, supplements, again, Gorilla Mode Base is like my favorite pre-workout of all time. I would not take it within two weeks of competition just because it's made in the same lab as some supplements that have stimulants that are banned in competition. So give yourself two weeks, but two weeks is plenty. Um, we don't want any cross-contamination pops. Onyx straps, it's the straps I use every single day, the best straps in the game. Get the leather straps. I use the Dark Knight ones. Uh, plenty of good options on their website. Code does it for 10% off. And Barbell Apparel. We're coming out with some hats soon, which are gonna be fucking sick. So be ready for that. Everyone can wear a hat all the time. So if you get one of my hats, tag me in it and I'll repost you and call you a hat dog. A dog hat. A dog hat. <laughs> a hat for dogs. But that's all. Uh, be on the lookout for the next YouTube video because we're going to go over jerks.
and you're gonna see that on Friday. And then after that is going to be the Arnold vlog, which is gonna be a lot of fun. So some good shit coming your way. Be ready for it, and I'll see you guys next week.